morning, good morning, sixth grade, or afternoon, or evening, or whatever it is you're watching this. It's morning for me here. I'm at my house, my home office, which is also the spare room. There's a bed right next to me. Um, anyways, that's off topic. So, <laughs> we're going to do grammar. We're going to do some grammar today. You guys were supposed to do your chapter review, which may or may not have been difficult. It depends upon how much you understood the lessons that we've been doing up until now, how much you've paid attention, how much you've watched the videos that I've posted for you of myself and of other people doing lessons online, and how good you are at grammar. It comes easier for some people than others. Um, it always was easy for me. I think that's partly because my grandma was an English teacher and she made us speak proper grammar from the time we started talking. But uh, for some people, it's just not as easy. And that's okay if you're struggling with it. That's all right. That means you're good at other things. Everybody's good at something, um, but not everybody's, nobody's good at everything. So we're going to go over the chapter review, the chapter five review page. I'm going to tell you the answers. What I want you to do is check your own work and you are responsible for your own learning. So therefore, if you've missed a lot in the section, and I would say if it's a section that has four, if you missed one or two even, that's a lot. If it's a section that only has one question and you missed it, then that's it. You missed the whole section. Um, now, if it's a silly little mistake where, like, you just know that you should have done better, you know it, you understand it, but you made a silly not paying attention mistake, that's one thing. But if you don't understand these, you need to go back, watch the videos from the lesson that we worked on that particular skill, and then try again. And if you're really having trouble, then email me and let me know, okay? And if you still are having trouble, even after you're working on it and everything, and you want to do a Zoom session or a phone call with me, then let me know because I'll be more than happy to meet with you to talk about these things and explain them. <clears throat> you can also search online um, on on YouTube. There's There are lots, lots of grammar videos, and I don't make you watch them all because it would take too long. And some people don't need to watch them all. But if you're really struggling with something, then it's a good idea to go back and find some other videos, some other teachers um, that have different tips and tricks. So anyways, let's go over the answers, okay? So page 95, the first sub top part, you are supposed to underline the simple subject once, the verb twice. And if the verb is a linking verb, you're drawing an arrow to these predicate noun or the predicate adjective. So number one, your under your subject is I and your verb is red. So I should be underlined once and read twice. Number two, the subject is author. The verb is, so you underline that twice. And then Louisa May Alcott is a predicate noun. So there should be an arrow from Louisa May Alcott to author. Number three, she is the subject, was is a verb, it's a linking verb, it's linking she to famous, so you should have an arrow from she to famous, and or other way around. Number four, Miss Alcott is the subject, wrote is the verb, and there are no predicate adjectives because that's an action verb. All right, so B, now this one I think was a little bit more challenging because you had to find the direct object and the indirect object and your prepositional phrases. Now, remember, your prepositional phrases begin with a preposition and end with a noun that's the object. A direct object answers the question whom or what after the verb, and the indirect object answers the question to whom or to what after a verb. So number five, you have two prepositional phrases. One is after dinner, and the other is on Friday night. So those both should be in parentheses, separate sets of parentheses. Then family is your subject, eats is the verb, and the direct object is popcorn. Number six, for Christmas is a prepositional phrase. That should be in parentheses. Cousin is the subject, gave is the verb. The Her is the indirect object, and game is the direct object. What did he give? Game. To who did he give it? Her. Or it could have been she. It doesn't specify if cousin was male or female. Anyways, number seven. Over the water is a prepositional phrase. That should be in parentheses. Moon is the subject. Shines is the verb. No direct object in that one. Brightly is a predicate adjective. 
No, it's an adverb. It's actually an adverb. Um, eight, the moon's reflection gives the water a dark hue. Reflection is the subject, gives us the verb. Water is an indirect object and hue is a direct object. Okay. Now, if you were confused on those, determine what it is that you missed. If it's prepositional phrases, then you need to go back and relearn your prepositional phrases. If it was the indirect object and direct object, then go back to those lessons, okay, and make your corrections. If you missed several, I want you to erase your answers, go back and watch a couple videos, come back and try again and see if you got them right this time. And then you can watch this video and you can fast forward to just the section where I'm talking about the part you struggled with. All right, so now C, you're putting parentheses around each prepositional phrase, underlining simple subject once, complete verb twice. And if there's an adverb, then you are supposed to circle it if it comes between the verb phrase. So number nine, we is the subject. Will paint is your verb phrase, so you should have underlined twice, both will and paint, and then probably get circled. That is an adverb that comes between the verb phrase. Number 11, I is the subject. Do enjoy is the verb phrase that gets underlined twice. Not is the adverb, so circle it. And then of work is your prepositional phrase. It should be in parentheses. Number 11, in the paint store is a prepositional phrase that goes in parentheses. And four colors is also a prepositional phrase, which should be in parentheses. Clerk is a subject. Gave is the verb, underline that twice, and that's all. 12, paint is the subject, looks is the verb, that's all for that one. 13, sister is the subject, is is the verb, and that's all for that one, for these exercises. All right, so flip your page over, page 96. This one we're putting in parentheses around the prepositional phrase, and you're labeling the sentence pattern and writing it on the line. So 14, in school is the prepositional phrase that gets put in parentheses. Savannah is the subject, loves is the verb. What does she love? She loves class, that's the direct object. So in the line, your sentence pattern is S-V-D-O. Number 15, for her age is the prepositional phrase. She is the subject, is is the verb, it's a linking verb. Artist is being linked to she. Artist is a noun, so it's a predicate noun. So your sentence pattern is S L V P N. 16. Uh, of a dog is a prepositional phrase. She is the subject, gave is the verb. What did she give? A painting. That's the direct object. Who did she give it to? Emily. That's the indirect object. So your sentence pattern is S V I O D O. Number 17, Emily also paints. Subject is Emily, paints is the verb. So, and that's very simple, that's it. So your sentence pattern is S, V. Number 18, of landscapes is a prepositional phrase that goes in parentheses. The subject is pictures, the verb is are, that's a linking verb. It links pictures to beautiful, which is an adjective, so that's a predicate adjective. So your sentence pattern is S, L, V, P, A. Next section has you diagramming sentences. So I'm going to show you these. This is what yours should have looked like. Okay. Now keep in mind that some of the sent some of the lines go through. Some of the lines go through the sentence line. Some of the lines don't. The line for predicate adjective, predicate noun slants. The line for direct object does not. Indirect object goes below the verb. Okay, so if you don't have your diagrams like that, please fix them. All right. Now, letter F. <clears throat> this is your last section. You're underlining the simple subject once and the correct verb. So this is subject verb agreement. 22, you're underlining planets as the verb and orbit. Orbit is the correct verb. I mean, planets is the subject. Orbit is the verb. Planets, orbit. 23, Jenny and brothers are both the subject. It's a compound subject, so you should have underlined Jenny, underlined brothers, and then the correct verb is own. So underline own. Jenny 
brother's own. 24, the subject is I, and the correct verb is watch. I watch. 25, the subject is expression, and the correct verb is implied. Expression implied. Number 26, the verb, the subject is we, the correct verb is stay, we stay. 27, the correct, the subject is bread, and the correct verb is rises, the bread rises. 28, Elise, I, both of those words are subjects, it's a compound subject, Elise and I. So you don't underline the and, but you're going to underline both Elise and also the I. And then sit is the correct, the correct verb, okay? So I want you to go and make a corrections. Make sure you make all your corrections. Spend some time going back and, and making sure you understand all of the sections. Um, if you missed several in one of the sentence, I mean, if you missed like more than one in any section, then you need to go back and redo that section, okay? And then you can email me, send me either your corrected, papers or email me telling me that you got them all right. Okay. And that'll be your work for today. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.